The St. Louis Blues put up heck of a fight against the Chicago Blackhawks. And honestly, I am so proud of this team. But we do need to talk about things that might need some improvement. This is all coming up on Locked on Blues. Your Locked on Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to Lockdown Blues. I am your host of Lockdown Blues, Haley Taylor Simon. And yes, I am still in the process of losing my voice. It was completely gone 20 minutes ago, but I wanted to get this episode in. So I just chugged a bunch of like DayQuil, honestly, so I could feel some sinus relief. But it is allergy season, folks. But that's not what's important. What is important is the Blues doing quite well against the Chicago Blackhawks, considering Connor Bedard was out on the ice. And then my biggest concerns with the St. Louis Blues and what I think the team struggles in the most from what I've seen during these four preseason games. And of course, my favorite Friday segment here on Locked on Blues, Are We Feeling Blue? Let's jump into things. Yesterday, the St. Louis Blues took on the Chicago Blackhawks in the Blues' fourth preseason game. And I have to say, I love the St. Louis Blues, and I am very proud of the St. Louis Blues and the battle that they put up against the Chicago Blackhawks. I have to say, going into this game, I knew it was not going to be easy. I knew that this was going to be one of their more difficult preseason games considering Bedard was out on the ice. To give you a little bit of a recap about this 2-1 victory Chicago had over St. Louis, the first period, no goals were scored. The second period, Connor Bernard had a lovely assist, and he is a very talented player, so I will say that, to Philip Khrushchev, and that made it 1-0 Chicago in the second. In the third period, our boy, RT, Robert Thomas, had a great goal assisted by Bush, and it equaled the game at one apiece. Overtime, not even a minute in, um, another Connor Bedard assist to Andres Athaniso, and that won the game 2-1. I am not going to sit here and say that that was the outcome that I would have wanted, but what I will say is that if you look at the box score and you break down this game, the Blues had 25 shots on goal while the Blackhawks had 33 So it was pretty much even in that sense. When it came to hits, again, same story, 22 hits for the St. Louis Blues and 23 hits for the Chicago Blackhawks. And then faceoffs won, the Blues won 21, while the Blackhawks won 23. So again, pretty much even. When it came to power play opportunities, Blues had three while the Blackhawks had two. So what I want to get at is this. The St. Louis Blues, if you look at the box score and you break down and you analyze the game analytically, uh, that was a big word for your girl, analytically, but it came out to be pretty much even. The Blackhawks were slightly more better on face-off percentage and about more shots that they took and things like that, but the Blues put up a heck of a fight against this young Blackhawks team that definitely has a lot of fire in them. And this Blackhawks team... Um, and I said this in a previous episode, they're not a real representation of what one of the worst teams in the NHL looks like after drafting a good player, because usually when you draft a good player after you're one of the worst teams in the league, actually the worst team in the league, it takes time for you to rebuild. But Connor Bedard is a different breed. So I don't think that, um, I don't think that. the blues have much to be concerned about in a sense, as I just think it's a completely different circumstance, but the blues did put up a fight and I did like what I saw in that last night from Joel offer. He did a great job. It is not easy going against a team that is as talented as Chicago right now. Um, here's the thing, folks. And this is my biggest problem when it comes to this hockey team. It is that I have no expectations for them. Obviously, I have some expectations, things that I want to see out of St. Louis. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, I expect them to do this, that, and that. 
because I don't think they're going to be a very good team this season. But on the other hand, when I see them putting up a fight against the Chicago Blackhawks with all their young talent and prospects on the ice, of course I am going to be proud of the Blues. I think St. Louis has proven to me that this preseason, this training camp, it is possible to make improvements each and every day. Obviously, that could be said about mainly any team in the NHL. But I think going on against kind of what I was saying in a previous episode, I don't know if it was yesterday's or the day before, the St. Louis Blues obviously had a bad season last year. And I can't comprehend if it was due to a fluky season, if it is due just to the fact that there's not enough talent. I don't know what the problem is, if there's not a good enough connection with Baruby. I am still trying to figure out what went wrong because it just seemed to me like they took a complete 180. I don't know if it was Ryan O'Reilly being traded, but even before he got traded, they just weren't the same Blues team that I was used to seeing on the ice with resilience, with um, good playmaking, and even better looked out of place. It just, it was not a good season. What I am seeing in preseason right now is a team that is at least putting up a fight and a team that's not just a cakewalk to beat. And I think that's what I'm most proud of when it comes to the St. Louis Blues is that they are actually putting an effort that they were missing last season. And last season, I think one of the reasons why it was as disappointing as it is, or it was, I should say, is because there just looked to be no effort on the ice. And I think that's a pretty uh, pretty tough um, way to end a season when your own team doesn't put out the effort. But Oh, no, I'm going to lose my voice again. Hold on. I need to pause this. I coughed it out. We're good. But the point that I am trying to make about the St. Louis Blues team is that I do like what I am seeing, and I am very proud of them. But going on with what I was saying about Robert Thomas, last night he stepped up and showed what a true leader was on the ice. And that goal, that was important because I hate Chicago. And I've said that numerous times on this podcast. I'll tweet about it. Chicago is the one team that I always want the Blues to beat. I cannot stand the Blackhawks whatsoever. I don't care if the Blackhawks are going to be really good and the Blues won't be. I still want to beat them. I don't even care if it's preseason. Like, I still want to beat them. I hate the Blackhawks. Um, Besides the point of me how much I hate the Blackhawks, um, the worst thing I think that can happen to a team during preseason is to be – completely shut out um, when the game was pretty much even. And Haley, what does that mean? It means that it's not like one team is significantly better than the other team. It means that the game was kind of even, but it, it, it's probably some, one of those things that I think about. I love hockey. I love the game of hockey, but it's like a psychological thing, right? You're playing a good game against another team that is kind of like the same level as you, but yet you're not able to get one foot in. And I want the guys to have this confidence, this swagger with them when it comes to the regular season. And kind of what I've been seeing in the preseason, yeah. I've been seeing really good job with the power play. I've been seeing a really good job with the PK, considering I've been liking that. Especially last night, they had, I think, three penalty kill- that they- penalties that they had to kill. They did a good job in that. Um, I like what I've been seeing in the net with Binner, even Subban, and uh, Hoffer, obviously. They did a good job. But most importantly, I am liking what I am seeing with the openness on the ice. And what does that mean? I am saying that they are finding good spacing out on the ice. And Robert Thomas does a phenomenal job about doing that. But I am liking that. And that was my one takeaway from last night. I always write down little notes when I'm watching the games. So I can reiterate back to you here in Lockdown Blues what I think. And I put down spacing looks really good. And... Each preseason game that I'm seeing, I'm noticing more and more that the passing is so much better because of the spacing. And uh, I think that that to me just shows that this is a team that has been working really hard on the things that they didn't do well last season. And I still want them to make, you know, take more shots on goal, obviously. But they have been improving in that ever since I came out with that episode that said, just go for it. Maybe they were listening. Maybe they were not listening. But, uh, yeah, I think that I like what I'm seeing at the St. Louis Blues, and you should too. 
you should feel good about this hockey team, this organization. <coughs> I almost coughed again. Okay. I need to stop coughing because I want to tell you about something that I love for my friends at DoorDash. All right. DoorDash is the best, okay? You need fresh groceries for the week and you don't have the time to go to the store? Try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash from getting food from your favorite restaurants. Well, now it is time to trust DoorDash again with getting food from your favorite grocery stores. I have to tell you, DoorDash groceries has changed my life. I'm a busy person. As many of you know, I work at a radio station. I don't have a life. I'm never home. But DoorDash grocery delivery makes it so I can actually eat good food and it's always in my doorstep and they literally always find the best substitutions if the weird food that I order is not in stock. Um, yes, I'm calling out my weird food habits. So if you want to get 50% off your first DoorDash order and up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKED at checkout. Again, this is a limited time offer. Terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and you use code LOCKED. Don't forget that's code LOCKED for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. <sighs> Maybe I need a DoorDash some medicine right now. Ooh, okay. I will get through this. The Blues' biggest struggles. I kind of teased this in the previous segment when I mentioned this. It is their lack of taking shots on net. The St. Louis Blues need to play more aggressively, more confidently. They need to come out and play like they should be the team that other teams should be concerned about. Now, they are regaining this confidence and swagger as each game in this preseason has gone on while they only have played four games. They are still getting kind of back to the swing of things. But I just want to um, – see the blues kind of take that next step, if you would say in a way, and just get on the ice and just dominate it. I hate always having to come back. And when I hate that, I hate being down right away. And it wasn't even right away. It was the second period, but I'm talking mainly about last night's game in Chicago. I just want the blues to feel like they have the talent that, and it's maybe they don't have it right, but they need to play like they do. And if they play like they do, then they're going to regain it. I think it's just about gaining confidence. And when it comes to the struggles, obviously the blue line, I've said that before, um, it's it's improving, okay? It's improving a little bit, but it's not improving to the point where I, would, I still would make a trade this season to get some better defenders. <laughs> and I hate to be that blunt, but that's the reality of the St. Louis Blues team is that they need to prioritize, prioritize prioritize. Why can't I say prioritize? What the heck? They need to prioritize the get better defenders. Okay. Before I began coughing, um, when it comes to the struggles with the St. Louis Blues too, it is how well they're going to adapt to Baruby this year. And I know that's not a struggle that um, we've seen in preseason, but it just makes me worried for the regular season. If the Blues don't play as well and Baruby's giving them pointers or he's trying to get them in the right direction, if they're going to take his feedback. Last season, I just felt like there was such a disconnect between the players and Coach Baruby that it made me a little bit nervous that Baruby would be gone this offseason just because that's usually the first thing to happen when a team doesn't respond to their coaches. The coach is the one that goes. But I respect him so much. Um, and I've said this a million times, I will always, always have a special place in my heart for him because he was the coach that got the Blues the cup. And you cannot take that away from him. But on the other hand, if the current team is not responding to him, you can have the amount of respect that could wipe a whole village. I don't even know what that analogy was. But you could have so much respect but still know that the team needed a change. I don't necessarily know if the team needs that change. But I guess that's one of my biggest concerns for this regular season 
is about the team responding to Baruby if they're not in a good position. Obviously, if the Blues are winning and they're very successful, they're going to respond well because you always respond well when you're up and winning. But it's when you're down and losing, that's when it shows if the players respect him. And I don't think that they ever didn't respect him. I just think that for some reason they just weren't clicking. And it isn't the same team that won the cup, right? There are a lot of guys still in the St. Louis Blues that were on that cup winning team. But a lot of the guys have moved on to other teams, um, retired. I, I wouldn't say necessarily that majority of the players on this team were on that specific team. So it's hard to say. But what I will say is this, is that this preseason, they've been putting up a fight. Training camp, they've been working hard. I've been watching their tapes. And I think just analyzing the game and taking away my personal love for the Blues and just looking at this team as a hockey analyst, right? They have had one of the best trading camps um, I have seen from a struggling team. I'm not saying that they had the best training camp in the NHL. That is not what I'm saying. But there are a handful of teams that have been struggling in the NHL this past season. More so than usual, actually. But besides the point, I think that their training camp um, has shown the most improvement from the struggling teams. And I think it's because these guys want to get back to winning because they know that they're capable of it. You had a coach that brought home, you know, that Stanley Cup to St. Louis. And when you have an organization that recently got the cup, you still have people that want another cup. And I'm sure Baruby wants to bring home another cup to the St. Louis fan base and the Blues and I'm sure Army does too. I'm sure that all of these guys want another cup in St. Louis. And there's still that level of you just tasted it in a sense. And despite that it might have been five years ago, it's still recent in relative time. So if you can just work on getting the guys um, on the blue line to improve a little bit more than they are now, I know it's going to take some time, but just get that improvement. Maybe look for a trade or maybe acquire some guys, develop some guys in the AHL. There are so many endless possibilities to make this team better without having to spend millions of bucks. Not that anybody would spend million, millions of bucks in hockey, but I mean, yeah, it depends. Like if Connor McDavid wanted to come over now, but um, yeah. But the point that I am trying to make is that the St. Louis Blues, they have potential. It may not be playoff potential, but they have potential to have a significantly better season. And a better season doesn't always equal making it to the playoffs, even though that is the goal. But it means that they will be playing with more motivation, with more confidence, more excitement than the guys I saw on the ice last season that didn't look like they wanted to be there at all. Before I go into my favorite segment, which is Are We Feeling Blue?, I want to let you know that you can follow Locked On Blues on Twitter at Locked On Blues, my Twitter at Haley T. Simon, or on YouTube at Locked On Blues. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. I love my everydayers. My everydayers are the people that comment like literally every single day. And I love replying to your comments, talking blues hockey with you all. I, I love Twitter. I'm a huge Twitter person. I tweeted and I think I spelled barely as in like the green because I could barely speak. I still can't speak. After this episode, I'm going to end up coughing for the next hour and it's not going to be pretty. Um, but it's fine because I needed to talk some blues hockey. But I truly do love talking to you all. And thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to talk some St. Louis blues with you all five days a week. And man. I love the Blues, and I'm just so excited for the season because I have optimism still, which brings me to Are We Feeling Blue? Are We Feeling Blue is a segment where I talk about if I feel like this was a good week or a bad week for the St. Louis Blues, hence the word Are We Feeling Blue because I'm using blue as a negative, even though blue is a positive because I love the Blues. But this has been my favorite Friday segment. I can't believe it's Friday already. Is it Friday? Hold on. It is Friday. <laughs> Wow, this week went by. Okay, are we feeling blue? Um, No, I am feeling good. 
I feel like this week, despite the fact that the Blues did lose to Chicago, I still feel like I saw some really good hockey and a, and a lot of improvement, without a doubt. I feel confident that this is St. Louis Blues team actually has something to prove this season, which makes me excited for this season to come. I think that this week also showed me a couple things. Oscar Sundquist, so important to the St. Louis Blues, and I am so happy he's back in the blue note. Tori Krug speaking out about how he wants to remain a St. Louis Blue and how he wants to be here is another positive because it just shows the impact this city and this team has on him. And another positive is my guy, Robert Thomas, being the shining star that he is, having a great game in preseason against the Blackhawks yesterday, but most importantly, showing his leadership and his confidence on the ice. It was also really cool to see Braden Shen walk the guys out the other night on the ice. Um, listen, I can't put into words how cool it's been to say captain of the St. Louis Blues, Braden Shen, because I have wanted this for him for so long, as you know. If you've been following Locked on Blues, you know that was my big talking point of the summertime. So I was really happy to see that. Also, Kevin Hayes has been doing well fitting in well, and he had a good week. I can't say there was too many negatives. It was good seeing Binner in the pipes again. Yeah, and Joel Hoffer, that was good too, Ed Subban even. But this team has made me super excited for this upcoming season, and I cannot wait only a couple more weeks until some regular season hockey, which is unbelievable how fast the time is going. I think it's October on Sunday, so in two days. Yep, hockey season's coming. All right, folks, thank you for bearing with me this episode. Um, it's the seasonal allergies cold. It sucks, but it is what it is. And like always, let's go Blues.